Lessons for Nelson Chamisa. University of Cape Town-based constitutional law expert Justice Alfred Mavidzenge has rallied the Zimbabwean opposition led by politician Nelson Chamisa to take lessons from events in Senegal that resulted in former President Macky Sall transferring power to a rival movement that coalesced around new Senegalese head of state Basar Diome Diakafe. Mavidzenge said courageous opposition leadership, clear ideological grounding, Collective and selfless leadership are key lessons Chamisa and the Zimbabwean opposition can take from Senegal. At the moment our attention is on Senegal where citizens have succeeded in stopping their president from seeking a third term. In addition, they succeeded in electing a youthful opposition candidate Basaru Diome Diakafe as their president. These are aspirations shared by many Zimbabweans given the legitimate suspicion that President Emerson Umingogwa may be tempted to seek a third term and or postpone the next 2028 elections to 2030. It is a positive thing that, as a people, we are interested in how others are achieving change in their countries. Culturally, that is our nature. I am reminded of one of our indigenous proverbs which says Kugaranoka Hone Tsavamwe, which means, in order to achieve our aspirations. We must learn from others. However, the biggest question is whether we are learning the right lessons. What are some of the lessons which can be drawn from recent events in Senegal? Is there any basis to learn anything from Senegal? He asked. Mavidzenge said Chimisa must learn to shun his high insecurity fears and work with a broader movement. The approach to opposition politics in Zimbabwe needs a major overhaul. There is a need to transition from building individual-oriented groupings to establishing issue-based movements. Zimbabweans need to look out for and support leaders who have clear ideological grounding capable of uniting people across the traditional political social and religious divides. There is a need for opposition leaders who live and practice democratic values of consultation and accountability. Without these values, it is impossible to build a movement capable of spearheading a democratic breakthrough. He said, Senegal events. In 2023, former President Saul was forced to abandon his third-term aspirations when he made a public announcement in which he declared that he would not contest in the 2024 elections. Earlier in 2012, Senegalese citizens successfully stopped another of their presidents Abdoulaye Wade from seeking a third term when they united and overwhelmingly voted for Saul, the then-opposition candidate. After abandoning his third-term bid, Saul attempted to prolong his tenure by postponing elections. Presumably, this was part of his attempt to buy more time in order to identify a preferred successor whom he could support in the elections. In Senegal, candidates for presidential elections are approved by the Constitutional Council. President Saul's preferred candidate was not approved by the Constitutional Council on account of failure to meet one of the eligibility requirements. Using its majority in parliament, former Saul's party attempted to postpone the elections. On February 5, 2024, parliament passed a bill postponing the presidential election from February 2024 as originally scheduled to December 2024. This sparked widespread protests which resulted in several people being killed by state security agents. The postponement of the elections was challenged through a petition filed before the Constitutional Council. The Council ruled in favor of the petition, holding that the postponement was unconstitutional. It ordered the elections to be held as soon as is possible, without specifying a date. A follow-up application was filed before the Constitutional Council requesting the body to clarify the date for elections and the council ruled that the elections must be held prior to the end of March 2024 in line with the constitutional deadline. The election was subsequently held on March 25, 2024 in compliance with the ruling of the Constitutional Council and the Constitution. FE won the elections by 54.28%, defeating the candidate of the then ruling coalition Emma Dubois who garnered 35.79% of the total votes. Fe has since taken over the reins from Saul as the President of the Republic. 
President Faye has appointed Osman Sonko as his Prime Minister. As mentioned above, prior to the March election, Osman Sonko was the most popular opposition leader who, however, had been disqualified from contesting in the elections, and he chose to endorse his colleague Faye. Chamisa Comparison Mavin Zinj said unlike Senegal Sonko who could work with Faye, Chamisa has shown that he is highly insecure with the idea of working side by side with other competent leaders. Unlike Sonko and Faye who were open to criticism, Nelson Chamisa perceives those who are critical of his leadership style as jealous of him or ZANU-PF enablers. Sadly, it is a view also shared by several Zimbabweans in the opposition. As a result, Nelson Chamisa has run his parties as if they are religious cults. The results have been quite costly not only for him but for Zimbabwe's struggle for democratic breakthrough. For instance, even though the Senegalese government banned the then main opposition party PASTEF led by Sonko, they did not succeed to decimate the opposition. In Zimbabwe, the dismantling of Nelson Chamisa's Citizens Coalition for Change has automatically led to the death of the opposition, and the ruling party ZANU-PF is now enjoying free reign. In this sense, the difference between Senegal and Zimbabwe is that in Zimbabwe Chamisa became the opposition while in Senegal, Osman Sonko built an opposition movement, he said. Clear Ideological Grounding Mavidzenj said Faye and Sonko mobilized the Senegalese people around a clear ideological standpoint and projected themselves as the colonial leaders who are committed towards ending the French neo-colonial exploitation of Senegal. This allowed them to establish alliances with various interest groups within Senegal and in the diaspora. The Zimbabwean opposition leadership space has persistently been occupied by personalities who are demagogues but with unclear ideological inclination. And as a result they have failed to establish the necessary alliances with critical stakeholders within and outside of Zimbabwe, he said. Mavidzenj said even though he had a trade union background. The late opposition leader Morgan Svangerai was not ideologically articulate and as a result he was very much untrusted amongst African leaders and some of the critical stakeholders within the Zimbabwean body politic. Consequently, Morgan Svangerai succeeded to galvanize support within the opposition circles but was largely unsuccessful in his efforts to establish alliances with those who traditionally support ZANU-PF. However, in 2008 he succeeded by defeating President Robert Mugabe but he could not capture state power due to lack of support from critical domestic and regional leaders, partly because of lack of trust which is attributable to his ideological opaqueness. The current opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, appears to have suffered the same fate. He confuses religion with political ideology. He forgets that, even though God may be in support of his candidature, God is not religious. God still expects his chosen leaders to use their wisdom to articulate a clear vision and craft a path which those who support them can follow. Courageous Opposition Leadership the Senegalese opposition's success in stopping former President Saul's third-term bid and winning the March 2024 presidential election is attributed to the brave and courageous personality of its leadership. In Zimbabwe, the main opposition leader Nelson Chamisa does not lead from the front. He leads from social media handles. When he took over the leadership of the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance in 2018, Nelson Chamisa vowed that he would lead peaceful protests from the front. Since then, he has only participated in one march where he became famous for doing push-ups as a symbolic demonstration of courage. But nothing further materialized, said Mavidzenj. Some of the opposition leaders, who include Job Sikola, Jacob Ngerevhum, Mekambariro Haruzovich, Joanna Mamom, Cecilia Chimbari. Netsai Marova, Obey Sit Hole, and others engaged in peaceful protests and were detained and ended up in jail for very long periods. Job Sikola, who was deputy national chairperson in Chamisa's party, spent 595 days in prison while youth leader Makambariro Haruzovich was jailed for a year. Unlike Faye Osonko in Senegal, 
Nelson Chamisa did not lead any protests to demand the freedom of his fellow comrades. In fact, he discouraged and distanced himself from groups of opposition supporters who attempted to organize peaceful protests as means of putting pressure on the state to release these leaders. Without leaders who are capable of leading from the front, it is impossible for Zimbabweans to achieve what the Senegalese achieved under the leadership of Sonko and Faye. Please like, comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.